My official July weather forecast is finally here, just in time for the start of the new month tomorrow. So to start off this video, I don't want to get straight into the long-range outlooks yet, but instead let's take a couple minutes to analyze what's been going on over the past couple of days and what will be happening for the first few days of July. As many of you probably already know or heard of, we had a large and powerful derecho which caused significant damage across Missouri, Iowa, Indiana, and especially Illinois on June 29th. This was actually quite a remarkable event, not only because of how long it lasted, but it's also interesting to note that it occurred on the 11th anniversary of the infamous June 29th, 2012 Mid-Atlantic derecho. Just take a look at the radar imagery from yesterday. Isolated supercells developed in southwestern Nebraska, northeast Colorado, and southeast Wyoming on June 28th. These cells formed a train and headed east through the night. When they arrived in northeast Kansas and northern Missouri during the early morning hours of Thursday, they started to congeal more into a mesoscale convective system. Long story short, they entered an extremely unstable environment as they approached Illinois, which created this absolute monster of a storm. It produced 60, 70, 80, and even 90 mile per hour wind gusts at its peak intensity over Illinois. It then crossed into Indiana, continuing to cause damage, but thankfully began to weaken at this point. It's looking like the overall severe weather pattern is going to continue shaping up over the central and northern U.S. in the weeks ahead. I'll have more on that coming up later in the video. So what exactly caused this to happen? Take a look at this graphic I created. The rink of fire is probably a term you've heard of, and it's quite common in the summertime. When a high-pressure system is in place, then storm systems tend to ride around the periphery of the high-pressure system. This causes a storm train to form over a certain area. This setup was actually so well organized that this radar loop from June 28th even resembled a train. Take a look at these four supercells that were following each other along the Kansas and Nebraska border. I talked about this type of weather setup in my summer weather forecast in May, and let's just say that the same type of a thing is starting to set up. The main difference is actually that the high pressure system that I thought would set up over the southwest has actually been anchored over Texas, and that actually explains why there has been so much excessive heat for a long time across the south central U.S. So what can we expect for the first few days of July? Here are the Storm Prediction Center outlooks for July 1st through the 3rd. As you can see, the severe weather looks to threaten very similar areas day after day. Then this weather pattern is going to shift, and then a new storm will bring severe weather potential to the northern plains and southern Canada on July 3rd. We won't get into details about these exact severe threats, since I'll be providing daily updates on this channel as well as live coverage. The purpose of this video is to talk about the long-range forecast for July, which we will start now with my temperature forecast. As far as warmer than normal temperatures go, we're expecting that across parts of the west, the southern United States, and the east coast. Areas with the greatest likelihood of seeing warmer than normal temperatures are shaded in red, and includes portions of the northwest, southern United States, and northeast. Places like California look to be a little bit closer to average, which is why they are neither orange or blue. The only place that I'm expecting to be colder than normal is much of the north central United States, especially in the dark blue shade. This is where I'm expecting plenty of rain associated with cold fronts, which will help mitigate the high temperatures at least for the first half of July. Moving on to the precipitation forecast, I'm expecting drier than normal weather across a large portion of the west, excluding California. Another area of drier than normal conditions is favored in the Great Lakes region. This doesn't mean I don't expect any rain, it just means that there's a higher likelihood that there will be less precipitation than normal. The weather pattern looks incredibly active for the month of July, with widespread above normal precipitation possible from the west down through the high plains and pretty much anywhere east of there except for the Great Lakes. Next up, my severe weather forecast. There are a few main areas to focus on. The green area, which encompasses western Washington, Oregon, and California, has the smallest risk for severe weather this July, which is pretty similar to any summer. In the yellow shade, severe weather is possible, with the risk being around average. 
I know I've talked a lot about the monsoon season being less active than normal in previous videos, but that also doesn't mean that's going to be non-existent. Weather models are indicating that we will see some monsoon action start up sometime in mid to late July, which could bring a severe weather risk with it. Because of that, areas in the red have at least a small chance at seeing severe weather, primarily in the second half of July. Lastly, that massive area of pink is where I expect the most frequent and intense bouts of severe weather to be in July. This will be due to the somewhat variable jet stream that we will be seeing, which will bring severe storms to different portions of the risk zone within this upcoming month. That includes much of the Northern Plains, Midwest, Missouri Valley, Ohio Valley, and Southern Great Lakes. Like every year, wildfires is going to be another aspect of the weather to look out for. These are the areas at greater than usual concern, and that includes portions of the Northwest, including all of Washington State, parts of Oregon, Idaho, Nevada, and Northwest Montana. The same goes for parts of Minnesota, Michigan, and Wisconsin, as well as New York State, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. This is no surprise, especially since the fire season has been historic in Canada. But there is at least a little bit of good news. Excessive rain and abnormal summer showers in parts of the West, more specifically over the Sierra Nevada mountains in California, will lead to a lower than normal risk for wildfires. This now brings us to my official and overall July weather forecast for the U.S. In the Northwest, look out for an above normal wildfire risk and hot temperatures. In California, I'm expecting pretty average weather with very little rain and warm temperatures. In the southwest, I'm expecting drier than normal weather overall. I do expect the monsoon to kick in as we head into the middle and latter half of July, but it will still be less than usual. Colder than normal temperatures can be expected in the northern plains, with frequent cold fronts bringing storms and rain. Places like Texas and portions of surrounding states, as you can probably guess, will continue to see continuous heat, with very little relief expected. For the Great Lakes and Upper Midwest, I'm calling this the wild card zone. This is where I expect the most diverse and interesting weather conditions. In this area, there's a possibility for wildfire smoke from Canada, dry and wet weather alternating, occasional severe weather outbreaks, and above normal risk of fires. Lastly, the entire East Coast can expect very active precipitation and storms, which will accompany cold fronts on many occasions. That will conclude my official July weather forecast. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more updates about the weather, don't forget to subscribe to this channel.